people see your success? Purchase your albums, attend your workshops, wear your name brand clothing, and give to your charity. But how many people know your personal struggle, understand your true purpose, or even see the hard work and dedication you put into your passion? It's time to go beyond the obvious and reveal the unseen. I am Carletta McMillan, and this is Beyond Revealed. So we're here at Johnson C. Smith yes. University. This beautiful campus, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I actually went here, right? Yes. This is your sophomore <laughs> year. Yes. Rise How does it sophomore. feel? It's, um, it's an honor, mm -hmm. honestly, right. because to travel such a long way and then become a part of a school that's right. just so well receiving. I have had the best freshman year ever. I've had hilarious experiences. I've had really blessed experiences. I've made some really good friends. And so it's good to be back. And I'm really glad I'm in Mosaic. It's, it's really exciting. To Where? Mosaic, Mosaic Village. See, I, that wasn't here when I was here. I was like, what? Well, I was gonna ask you that too. See, my sophomore year, I stayed in Greenfield. Oh, yeah. Where did you stay freshman? I stayed in Myers for a while and then I transferred to Sanders. Oh. But the funny thing is, right. if you had to ask everybody on this campus where I stayed my freshman year, they would be dead certain that I lived in Mosaic because of all my sisters, quote unquote, the South African girls that are in right. Mosaic. We, um, yeah, we, we were very fortunate to come into a school and have sisters waiting to sort of show you, you and let right. you know in the 411 like look this is what you do this is what you don't do right stay away from that mm -hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> i think we all had that talk i know when i came in we was like don't go yeah. to this uh this particular dorm don't go to that dorm I don't be caught know which dorm you're right. talking about we're not gonna um say the carter no. out loud so um is it a carter <laughs> <laughs> okay tell me how you to pronounce your name it's pumi it's Pumi. So my full name, I have a very interesting name and right. I like to joke about it because I've got about five syllables in it mm -hmm. and it's 11 letters in total. My full name is Nom Pumelelo. Oh. That's my full okay, name. Okay, help me out. Nom. Nom. Pu. Pu. Melelo. Melelo. Yes, so it's Nom Pumelelo. Nom Pumelelo. <laughs> <laughs> Do your teachers get it crazy too? <laughs> it's all right. But um, it means success, mm -hmm. and so because I travel so much, I've decided to go with the shorter version of my name. So I go Mpumi. by Mpumi. So Mpumi is what it would sound like back home, mm -hmm. but in the States, it's just Pumi. Right. Just, just Pumi. Okay, so let's get down to exactly what brought you here to Johnson C. Smith. Why Smith? Why Smith? Right. I get that. I get that question a lot. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, before then, I know that you're um, a graduate, the first yeah, class no graduate. Class. Yeah, right mm -hmm. from Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. Let's get into that for a while. I okay. really want to know exactly, you know, um, how it started for it you. Started? I know it was it was it's a lot of details that went into. Oh yes, right. <laughs> oh yes. Right. So this all pretty much started when I was thirteen years right. of age, and so I'm born in South Africa, grew up in Johannesburg City raised on the outskirts of the city and so I went to school in the city of course right. and um, I was raised by my grandmother and so I I think I was I was in the seventh grade when we were just about to close for break and um, I remember we were in a big exam room mm -hmm. and the teachers were literally going across the room and they'd like hand point students and you know, I, I, I've always been inquisitive, and so obviously I'm looking out like, I wonder what that's for, until they point me. I'm like, right. oh, maybe I should get back to writing my, you know? And so after the exam, the teachers all call us to one side and they say, oh girls, we um, found out that there's a new school being built in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey herself is building a school in South Africa, and um, there are a lot of requirements. We've read the criteria, but we think that you all should give it a shot. Right. And so obviously I went home, but at first I was like, no, really guys, there's, there's no way Oprah Winfrey's gonna come all the way to Africa and build a school. Right. And at that point we had like um, perspectives of the school, like mm -hmm. a pamphlet that had sketches and most of it was blueprint. It was very graphically designed. And so I'm a 13 year old, like, okay, so where is the school? Because right. the school is not even real. And I was like, I don't know if this is all. And so I went home and I told my grandmother, I was like, okay, so it turns out that Oprah Winfrey is building a school. And my grandmother was really excited when she found out it was boarding school because more than anything, she wanted to, me to get out of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and get a good education. Right. I, I wanted a boarding school as it was. 
And so I applied and I promise you like from the first level of acceptance, I was the first student to make it out of the area, to make it out of the district, to make it out of the city. Mm -hmm. And then before I knew it, we were going, having all these interviews. I'm talking IQ tests, I'm talking aptitude tests, I'm talking science, math, English. And you know, it's always so interesting because you come from a school where you're used to being top 10, number one, number two. I was gonna ask you about that because I've, I've read so many of your, oh, yeah. your articles that people interview you for and you always say you were used to being the smartest one in the room. But when you got there, there's suddenly a whole lot of smart right. people in one room. And that can be so interesting. Because, you know, character dynamics and you're all in one room and you're girls. And so it was it was a very interesting mm -hmm. but um, memorable experience, something that is unforgettable. And so I went through all the interviews. We had a series of, of interviews, I think about eight, nine, where they take wow. us from our school and take us to different various institutions within the area mm -hmm. and conduct all these tests. And the last interview was with Oprah Winfrey herself. I was going to get to that. Yes. And you guys, I remember you said that um, that you walked in and no one else would come out. Oh yeah, so they had us in this room. I remember they told us like a week before, they're like, okay girls, your last interview is going to be, um, your last interview is going to be um, at, at St. John's College and there's no studying for this big test. Right. All you bring is a pencil. <laughs> okay, get our pencils, we go on for this interview. And usually, obviously, if you're doing a big examination, you walk into a big hall and have everybody interview you. No, we get into this building and it's beautiful and there are couches and we're all seated and there's this one brown mahogany door that everybody gets called up to, but nobody comes out of. And so it becomes less and less of you sitting out here right. and you're wondering where everybody else is going. And you can sort of see on the side, people are coming out. out. And they have all these reactions, right? And some people are in tears, and I just sat there. <laughs> Were you scared? What was your... Oh, yes. Yeah. I was really scared. I was, I was... Ooh. I think... But I've always been good at carrying myself. Right. And so it, it never showed. But um, I remember walking into the room, and there were these huge, like, literally these huge fluorescent gold lights. Wow. Very glamorous, show businessy. Right. And... Right in the center of the room is Oprah Winfrey herself in a big golden chair. And right next to her is Gail King. Right. And her PAs and half <laughs> of the hub. Oh my goodness. Really? What did you do? Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I walked in obviously and I was like, good afternoon. And what was really amazing about that moment is how Oprah Winfrey herself, you know, she rose up and she stood up and came to embrace me. She came to me right. and she hugged me. And so when somebody does that, that automatically reinforms the energy of right. the room. That reconstructs the aura and the energy. And so I was very relaxed and chilled. Really so did you chilled. guys did you guys <laughs> talk then? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean you can imagine, I it's always so interesting because the school finds you and then they say, Okay, we think you're the it girl. Right. And then you you find yourself in an interview sitting with Oprah Winfrey across you. You know she's got that serious stare. She's like mm -hmm. Tell me why you're the it girl. Well, <laughs> um, you know, I'm hardworking, I'm this and this. But um, she was she was amazing because she got to the very root. She's got that, that medicinal thing about her right. interviews. And so she asked questions from how were you raised, who mm -hmm. raised you, what was your life, why do you want to go to the school, mm -hmm. do you understand what the school is about, right. how will you best honor this opportunity. and. I, I often wonder what carried me through those moments mm -hmm. because I was a 13 year old right. trying to get into a school and at that stage you hear about leadership, you hear about the world but you don't necessarily understand the scope wow. and the magnitude of it all. Right. So that was definitely divine intervention by no doubt, the fact that I was just able to be carried throughout those so, series of interviews. So from actually uh, meeting Oprah from that point, mm -hmm. did you guys build a relationship? Was she always coming back and forth to South Africa? Yes. When she says, these are my daughters, she, she these are her daughters. Right. You literally. guys had luxury on campus yeah. at the Institute. I mean, I think because we're the first class and so a lot of things were trial and error. Mm -hmm. Everybody was trying to create the best of the best so that it would work because right. the world was looking at this experiment initially and everybody wanted it to work. And so the first two years, I'd always say that it's, it's like, it's a baby school. So mm -hmm. you think of a newborn child, mm -hmm you automatically want to give it the best. Right.
Okay, so your name means success? Yes. How of uh, your mother named you, your grandmother? My named. grandmother named me. Right. Um, my grandmother has practically been my mother, so she counts right. as my mother. But she named me success, which is, I think, one of the earliest gifts I was afforded in life to be given such a beautiful name. Um, you said your grandmother raised you. Your mother uh, passed when she, when you were nine. Yes. Uh, from the, the disease of AIDS. Yeah. How did that take um, effect or a toll on you? Do you remember? Oh yes. Um, honestly, it it was very interesting to go through that. First of all, I'm Zulu, mm -hmm. very cultural, cultured tribe. Right. And so it takes time for people to accept the realities in life. And some people don't come to easy terms when a family member has HIV and AIDS or right. if a family member has to be bisexual, transsexual. You know, these things take right. time. And so I, I was a part of a family that was obviously accepting of it, but I understood that it was really hard for them. Right. But ironically, I never ever felt the shame or if anything, honestly, if I, when I look at my life, I would do everything the same again because everything had to happen the way it did for me to end up where I am today. Mm -hmm. And so when she was sick, she, she sat me down. I think this was after she found out that she had the disease. I was eight at the time because she was sick for a good one year, six months before she passed. And I was nine when she passed. So she sat me down and she said, um, this is what I have, I have HIV and AIDS, and this is what it means, right. and this is what's going to happen. And I'll never forget that conversation because I sat there and I listened to my mother speak, and I felt like I understood. Even though I didn't understand everything, I was only AIDS, but she spoke to me like, you like understood. I understood. Right. And she made me promise that I would learn from her life's mistakes, mm -hmm. and I would do the opposite. And she made me promise that I would work hard all my life and that I would change things for the family. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I think that's where I got my awakening in life. From you that know, conversation. From that promise that I made to my mother. It's, it's the reason I strive, it's the reason I work so hard because it's such a personal, very deeply rooted you know, part of my life. Now what's one thing that she, that lives on still? It's um, definitely the fact that I'm her spitting image. So I look like, like my your mother. Mom. I, I am my mother, the same height, same body, same eye look, which, which you know can really be um, a bit of an emotional process sometimes because something as simple as waking up and you miss her and you, you meet yourself in the mirror. Right. And there's that double reflection, and you know? Or if you walk into a family event and you can sort of see family members looking at you but through you know as though they're looking at my mother and you can see them still go through that emotional battle to, to really accept that she's right. gone you know so and the transition from South Africa mm -hmm. to the United States how was that for you it was um, fairly um, simple mm -hmm. actually because um, after I graduated high school I um, had an internship at home so I got into the whole act of you know learning to be independent waking up going to work and so that really started to prepare me for this life that i'm living apart right. from you know having my grand saying will we do this will we do that and so um and when it came the time for us to come to the united states we were fortunate enough to go in and around the state so we landed in boston and then went to go see new york and then spend some time in hollywood and then spend some time in chicago wow. and so <laughs> all of this before school starts is really it really sets the scope for the culture and the people that you're surrounded by you know right and so and when i came to the states i, I had a great time we had a two-week summer um college program mm -hmm. program at boston college mm -hmm. and really what it was is um it was an introduction or an initiation so to speak into what college life is like in the right. united states because we have different mm -hmm. curriculums you know, South Africa has the whole British imperialism mm -hmm. history, and so our curriculums and our education system is predominantly different. Right. So it was helpful for us to be a part of these programs that would show us how, you know, essays are referenced, things mm -hmm. that you take for granted, the fact right. that universities have databases, well, that's across the board, but you want to learn that as a freshman so that when your professor says, use this, use this, use this, you know what to work with. Nice. And so everyone has been so amazing. 
it's it's been such a humbling experience oh, i don't so, understand so everyone happy. has been so amazing everyone has exceeded in so many ways to make sure that this experience is more than what we ever expected it to right. be and so that's why there's a huge part of me that is so committing committed to to making it work right. i want to fulfill every promise i made to my mother every promise i made to miss winfrey herself every mm -hmm. promise i made to the school in honoring the scholarship i mean it's a full ride academic scholarship right that's big and so i want to do my best Ooh, I, I, I just I, <laughs> I wish i would have had a little bit of money coming to <laughs> me <laughs> yeah, yeah right and the tuition went up too the tuition went up too as well so and Ooh. it's 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 a blessing you don't want to take that for granted right you, you just don't because the same way you get it is the same way it's so easy for it to suddenly not be there and the best way to ever honor a blessing is to be a blessing and bloom wherever it is that you're planted right. and bless others and con continuously just do your best. Right. So when you're when you're done here, mm -hmm. um, you plan to move back to South Africa? Um, that's another question I get a lot. Yeah. When I'm at the airports, airplane, are you planning to move back? Right. Are you leaving um, us? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pursue uh, my MBA degree at Stanford. Mm -hmm. And so that's another two years. Right. Um, so I'll tell you what I plan to do for the world. Let's do that. Yes. And then that will set the scope for why I'll live my life mm -hmm. post-grad the way I plan to. I want to inspire. I want to inspire. I, I don't seek being perfect. I'm not a perfectionist. In fact, I understand that we have our imperfections as human beings. But I, I want to inspire people by how I handle my imperfections. Right. How I maintain being the real me and still do what's right in the world and contribute my piece and so I want to work with girls I want to inspire girls because when you come from a certain place where you're not taught that as a girl you have a voice that as a girl you can stand up to a man and tell him mm -hmm. this does not sit well with me I will not tolerate this right or something as simple as I love this this is my dream this is what I'd like to do I want to give girls the, that voice that ability so in retrospect I want to recreate what was created for me. The girls' school, I want to have projects, I want to have initiatives. I'll start in Africa, in mm -hmm. South Africa in particular, because it's what I know. Right. But it will always be in conjunction to the United States because we all need that work as girls. No matter where you are in the world, mm -hmm. we all have insecurities, we all need the same motivation. Right. And that's what I want to do. Hence, I never see myself settling in one place because I constantly have to travel and expose myself to the world mm -hmm. so that I can be A1 for these girls. Right. And you have to travel so that you avoid being ignorant or having a myopic view in life or becoming a self-centered person. You have to travel. And so, yeah, I don't see myself traveling, but I'll spend a lot of time at home. I'll spend a lot of time in the States. I really like Europe. Mm -hmm. I really like the UK. And so I, I'd, I'd like to spend some time there. The world is really, you know, I was at, just at our fingertips. Say, it really is. Especially at, at yours, you have so much going for yourself you could just hear it you know when you speak how you yeah. carry yourself how you interact with others mm -hmm. um, you're inspiring me that's why I was so <laughs> excited I'm like yes I have to sit down with you <laughs> I have to understand and just really you know speak to you I want to I want to know you know everything <laughs> everything there is right like oh my gosh who are you and you chose and you know, this you know it's such an honor to hear you say that because it's so simple to often if you're living the life mm -hmm. I mean, I'd have so many times where Tando or Auntie Tina or somebody would have to come to me and say, Bumi, calm down. Right. You're good. Right. Because I want to, to do my best. I want to constantly do my best. And when you want that, very often you feel like, okay, I need to fix this or I need to do this. And so it's very humbling when you find somebody who starts off as a complete stranger saying, this is inspiring. I want to know more about this. You are right. reminded of the bigger piece and the bigger picture that, okay, so I am doing God's work. Right. And it seems that I'm going in the right direction, so let me just go ahead and carry on and see where this takes me. You are so awesome. You're going right into where I, what I want to talk to you about next. I am? Yeah. <laughs> Everything we talked about was great, of course. Mm -hmm. and when I was posting it, everyone was so excited. Oh my gosh, you know, she's one of uh, Oprah's, you know, daughters. <laughs> I was excited too, but honestly, I was more excited about how we connected, uh, how we met. Uh, we met uh, from CC Michaela's event. Yes. From the single ladies Boaz mm -hmm. babes. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you How did you meet her? Um, I had been speaking at an event right upstairs at Grimes mm -hmm. for um, 
Women of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's a program that was directed and planned and, and coordinated by Louisa mm -hmm. Taylor, who is a great student here at Johnson C. Smith. And, um, you know, she had approached women who she felt were doing relatively great in their career paths and their career fields, and they were all at different stages. And so we had Mrs. Brown, Ms. Brown, who is residential life. We right. had Cissy Michaela herself, who is entertainment and, you know, history in Hollywood. And everybody had something. And I just felt like, okay, what, what am I going to say? Because right. I'm the youngest of this panel of women. But um, it was such an honor to speak because um, I spoke a lot about what I knew. I couldn't speak on a lot of, you know, um, what I didn't know or other women's experiences. Right. But I said... I don't know much about wisdom, but I know that I've learned this. I know that I've tried this, and here's what's worked for me. That's wisdom. And that's right. the best that I can offer right now. It can certainly change, but um, it was fun to be able to speak and um, be heard from just where I was right. personally. It and was then, a great opportunity. And then Cece actually invited you out to her event? Yes, and you to were speak her, at her event. Right, you mm -hmm. spoke there. Um, what touched me and I was like, as soon as you were done, and while you were up there, I was about to shed tears because you, you were so modest, you were so focused, you were so pure, um, you know, all of the above when it comes to a young lady and how she carried herself. Mm -hmm. um, how, where, you know, how, where, how, how, what, how, yeah. What? <laughs> You know, like, like, how did all that like be, begin for you? You were, you're so focused. Are you still on the on the same path of um, stretching towards purity, stretching towards celibacy, stretching towards the whole um, spiritual um, life um, and path? So how it started was that pact, that promise I made to my mother that right. I spoke about earlier on, mm -hmm. and so I promised that I would try my level best to always use her life and her mistakes with men as reference to mine. Right. Because you see, what we don't realize is that we're born into these cycles. Mm -hmm. You're born into a cycle and you, you, in a very like unconscious way, you play out the mistakes that your parents have done. And especially if you come from a home that is not open to communication, mm -hmm. you know? And so I promised myself to say, okay, if, if I'm gonna date a guy, I'm gonna go back to a time in my mother's life. What mistake did she make then? And how am I gonna try to avoid that mistake? And so it's, it's been pretty interesting because I'd look at even back home, you know, you talk to guys. Oh, well, back then I thought it was relationships. Now you're grown and you're like, that was never a relationship. I was talking to him. But um, you, I've realized that a lot of the mistakes that I could have made, I had been divinely, like, divinely um, taken and protected from by coming to the States. And since I've been in the States, I haven't really, you know, been with anybody like right. that. And so, and part of the reason is because I, I, I'm constantly trying to avoid the mistakes that I've already seen play out. Mm -hmm. And it's tough because at this age, it's, we, we, we're, we're born into such a controversial society, one that tells you what's expected of you, mm -hmm. but um, also makes it very tough. It, it, it will encourage you to be an individual, to be, you know, claim your voice, but also makes it very tough for you to exist in the bigger scope of things, to say, right. this is who I am as a woman, this is what I want, this is the type of man I'd like to see. It's very tough. Right. And I guess my commitment to my studies and what I'd like to do in life has certainly helped me shift the focus, and I pay more attention to what I feel is a priority. And obviously, you know, everywhere you go as a girl, you'll find guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. Guys are everywhere. <laughs> are, they, are they here, like, going after you on campus? Um... I, I have, I have, you know, I don't know how to oh. answer that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think everywhere you go in life, you should, I mean, you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But um, what I will say, though, is that, um, you know, as much as we want to think that college life is all about fun and, mm -hmm. you know, these are our formative years where you really define and tell the world through mm -hmm. your actions who you are. Right. Now, not to say that we should define each other by our actions, but it's to say that you want to think about the things you do. You want to, and it's not easy. Like, I've, I'm even learning about social networking where you, in your mind, something sounds so good. You can say it, mm -hmm. but somebody else who is a continent away can read that and receive another message. Right. So learning to navigate that world is very complicated. With me, people know about my history. People know about what I've achieved. So it's very easy for there to be preconceived notions or ideas of who I am as a woman 
But at the same time, I'm still a young girl. Right. I'm yet to turn 21, and there's so many things happening in my life. And so a lot will happen, you know? And so I try very hard to protect that part of myself. To, I'm very, very protective of myself. And to people who don't understand, it could come across as a little, you know, cocky or a little centered. Mm -hmm. But anybody who knows me would know that it's all, it's all honestly in, in, in the interest of preserving the dream. Because for me to be here, a lot of people have invested in my life. They did. And I never want to take that for granted. Right. I wake up in the morning and I think about how many people in this world know about where I am, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want to see me do well. Right. And so they want it's to see no longer you, just about me. You want they want to see you live up to your name. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I think the saddest thing is to you you find a fella who you really like. You find Ooh. him and he's he's cute, he's right. nice. But we don't have the same visions. Yeah, and it doesn't find a, work. Find a fella. A fella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've heard it before, but it's it, you know, yeah, coming from yeah, someone your yeah, age. It's, yeah. It's fella. I, I I'm an old soul at heart. Right. It's okay. But uh <laughs> You know, it's it's one of the toughest things because once again, with the media, with the world, it's right. so easy for you to just attach yourself with somebody who makes you feel good. And mm -hmm. but it doesn't work if you don't have the same principles or the same work ethic. I I work extremely hard, and if I ever in my life have to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing, then chances are we're not. It's just an, oh I, I I don't want to explain why I'm in the library for as long as I'm I have. gonna give you a list of guys. <laughs> and just tell this to them, please. Like, hey. <laughs> Tell me your, your <laughs> biggest achievement yet. Um, wow. Ugh, ah. <laughs> um, my biggest achievement is, if you had to look at where I've been, where mm -hmm. I've come from and where I am now, it's most certainly a big achievement to be here. Coming from as far as a South Africa? South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, and right. getting as far as I did. Right. But it's to... The biggest fulfillment, rather, is is hearing people say to me, like, I've had, I've, after I speak, I'll have a woman who is maybe in her 50s. At, at CC's event, mm -hmm. I had a lady come up to me when I was done talking, and she said, you know, I had a tough time getting up this morning, and something just kept telling me I should come and hear you right. speak and whatever not. And she's like, after hearing you speak, I know exactly why I had to be here. Wow. Because I have a home with children who have, you know, who have the disease, and for a long time as a mother, I didn't know how to accept that. Right. But after hearing your story, I realized that there's a bigger picture to all of this and there's a reason why I go through what I go through. Mm -hmm. That for me is the biggest fulfillment to know that I'm able to say something and that serves as healing or, you know, as light to somebody else's life. That is powerful because you only spoke for about two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so I quick. tried really hard. To <laughs> you hit like strong points in two minutes. I tried really, really hard. And right. that's another success because, like I said, you, you come from, you come from a, a life that is not about creating you to become your full self. Right. If anything, the policies, you're, you, you're set up for failure. You know, right. you're born into a life that is just set up for you to fail. And so for me to get this far and then still know that I can have an influence mm -hmm. is, is the biggest achievement. And by being myself, because I can't, I can't maintain a life or I can't claim a life or I can't claim to be this person. I'm just, for me, I, I, I have my flaws. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just a girl. I'm growing. I'm trying to do what I think is right. right. It works. But, um, and that's it. Right. I'm happy to know that that inspires. What has been your um, biggest change thus far? Um... Rather good or bad, I won't judge, but like your biggest change, even someone, you know, someone has maybe pointed it out to you. I have, um, I've certainly become more um, career driven. Mm -hmm. And that can, you know, that can sometimes hinder your relationships because I, I prioritize, I prioritize. Right. If it's your first year in college, you want to hang out, you want to, you know, <laughs> you want to go out and see downtown, you want to do this. And I do that and have my share, mm -hmm. but I, I don't compromise, I don't negotiate when it comes to, if I want my president's A's or my dean's A's and B's, I want them and right. I'll make sure that I get them. And if at any point I need to set the record straight with a friend or a sister, I will do that. And so that has been the biggest change because I, I never knew that I could do that, to tell somebody that, you know what, right now, I'm really not trying to do this. I, right. I'm trying to get something done without thinking that I'm offending them. Or, so to learn that language to, to, to really communicate well, that's been my biggest, I guess, forthcoming change. I feel like I'm growing into myself gradually, just easing into You're myself. Wonderful. Thank you. Really you. Are. <laughs>
Thank you for watching another episode of Beyond Revealed. I hope that you were encouraged by this story. Keep in mind by opening up with others, you are prompt them to open up with God. Stay tuned next week for another powerful interview. I have to start for me next week, right. moving into a new place. Just flew in, it's, it's a lot. Oh. But um, I, to I told you, I just flew into Charlotte last night, figured my stuff out, got into the apartment today, literally clothes are everywhere. Just found this dress that you I see put my house. away. And I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, this is for Colette, and I put it on and I can. Right. Any, any opportunity to share what God has given me is an honor. Right. I don't care where I am. <sighs> this is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank you welcome. very much. Thank oh. you very much for coming. <laughs> I love it. I love it.